Folks, we're getting a second chance to put our stakes in the ground. We already had some snow blowing that we did cause some driveway, well, not driveway damage, but we caused some off driveway damage because I, I couldn't exactly see where I was snow plowing and snow blowing. So we're gonna get these in the ground today. Can you believe 100 bucks for 40 of these things? I've got 800 foot of drive. I think more than that if you count the other area too. We're not even gonna do the gravel drive today. But I gotta get these in the ground. We'll see if this is enough or not. I, I just didn't wanna really pay more than $100, but uh, it is technically preventative, preventative maintenance, something like that. It's prevention to avoid maybe bigger repairs down the road. And it's just really annoying too. I just blew off or brushed off a bunch of, of dirt and mud that was on here. And when you're, when you're blowing snow and you see mud coming out of your your chute instead of snow well that's kind of frustrating to see as well so um anyway we're gonna get this dialed in and stumbled upon an article you know i don't always make videos and watch videos sometimes i read too probably not as much as i should but i was on tractor by net saw a post on there or a forum thread actually looks like it's been around for a long time about a bunch of tips on snow blowing what to do what not to do so we're gonna go through that today hopefully help you avoid some of those mistakes that can really add up on cost. Before we get into it, just a reminder, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button. We want you to tag along and like it too. Give us a thumbs up. And we do sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country, so check out goodworkstractors.com. And if you have a better idea, some sort of alternative to these, uh, these markers here, which, I don't know, they seem to last several seasons before they get all damaged and, and try to put fiberglass slivers in my hand, well, I'd be open for that too. I suppose I don't even need to do one here, but I will just to be safe. that good? Maybe it's not. Hitting something there. Okay, so again, this is from Tractor by Net, and in fact, it looks like it's a, a blog post that they probably took from the, the forum thread, which has all sorts of good stuff, and I'm just going to go through his first list of stuff, and there's a ton of replies, so I'd encourage you to check it out. It's, it's just fun reading, and I talk about forums all the time as just being a really good community. It's, it's tractor owners. That's there's just forums full of tractor owners, right? So if you have a question, um, if you're looking for a, a new idea or a new tool or you have a problem or whatever it is, there's always a good reason. We've talked about green tractor talk, orange tractor talk, tractor by net is kind of a, a general, all encompassing, every brand of tractor is welcome. Green, orange, red, blue, whatever, whatever color you have. But uh, anyway, so the first, the first one that he's got on here, pretty obvious, but hey, okay, don't put your hand in the moving auger. Same thing goes for the PTO shaft area, right? But seems obviously obvious, you know, but if you're, well, you saw me maybe earlier with my, with my broom, just kind of brushing stuff off and maybe you get distracted, you leave it there and you forget about it, but you don't want something snapping off in there and maybe going flying around, whether it's out the chute or, or coming back at you or anything else, but all those moving parts in the augers and the PTO shaft, very dangerous. It's safety 101, but it's worth a reminder. So, and of course, I mean, while the tractor is running, even if the PTO is off, that's how accidents happen. They don't happen because things go as planned. They go because something goes awry. Maybe somebody comes and sits on the seat while you're back here, just kind of filling around and, and hits a button and all of a sudden there it goes. So anyway, if you value your appendages, as this user says, you'll avoid doing that. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't see this one on the list, but I'm gonna add it because I've talked about it before and it's what we're doing right now. And it's mark your stinking driveway before you, before you wanna blow snow. And, and in our case, for everybody who drives up and down the driveway, because look at all this, this mud right in the corner. And this is where I was really blowing mud out of the chute too. There's just a tendency to cut this corner. And so we're gonna mark it now real tight. But I think I'm gonna add well, I had that two to three inch stone that we were using, I don't know, a month ago, wherever it was. I think I'm gonna kind of build out kind of like a shoulder right along here uh, with that stone too, because it's gonna be unavoidable to, to never have people driving, kind of cutting this corner, but 
Yeah, this just irritates me just to look at. And then we got another area on another turn. It's the same exact situation with the same kind of stuff going on. Drives me nuts. But, you know, we just moved in, so we're kind of getting our, our bearings still, you know. But then I, uh, right behind me on the other side, got too aggressive and ripped some sod off when I was pushing snow over there too. So it's just been, mark your driveways. It's not going down very far. All right, now back to his list, his rule number two. Make sure all the crap that can break your blower and shear pins are out of the way before the first snow. All right, so things like a piece of firewood, maybe that pile of little rocks that you threw off the edge of the driveway, anything that could be in the way that you thought, yeah, I'll know that's there when it's buried underneath a foot of snow. Get it before it's covered in snow. It'll make a big difference. Otherwise, well, along with that, have a pile of shear pins at the ready anyways. The last thing you wanna do is be out of stock and have to do it by hand. Okay, next rule, and I agree with this one wholeheartedly, and it kinda, it's a conundrum, right? Cause I'll have folks say, well, how does it do with six feet of snow that come in? Well, don't wait until you have six feet of snow and then try to clear it. So do it in increments. If you know a big storm's coming, it's not gonna catch you out of the blue typically. It's gonna be all over the news. You're gonna have cancellations, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. Oh, hang on, we got a delivery coming. Gotta move. So like I was saying, you know it's coming, so get out there, tackle it when it's six inches of snow or 12 inches of snow. Don't wait for it to be feet and feet of snow to do. I know extenuating circumstances always come into play, but make your life easier, not harder. So you're working remotely from home, whatever it is, the roads are too bad to go anywhere. Just take care of stuff at home. You don't want to drive over it and pack it all down anyways. And so if you can clear it before you do that, you're going to be better for it. Look at that. We just had another video hit 100,000 views. It was the prevent flat tires and tractors, trailers and trucks. It's multi-seal or flat out, depending on which one you get. But that stuff, it's a flat preventative, a flat tire preventative basically is what it is. It's pretty cool stuff. Rick came up from multi-seal and hammered. He's got 300 puncture holes in this test tire. It's still holding the air. So check that video out too, pretty cool. Okay, this one I am guilty of not doing on a routine basis. Now I do, try to store my equipment in a uh, heated uh, garage and so hopefully it kind of melts off and dries off and everything but always clean all the snow off your equipment when you're done he says i learned this the hard way the second time that i snow blowed the snow blower was making a lot of racket when it started i noticed black smoke coming from the dry belts in the back i shut it down and called the dealer he says didn't you clean out the augers and impeller after you finished when the snow melts it freezes on the bottom of the impeller assembly such that the impeller won't turn duh nobody told me to do that Bonus tip that he has for this one. He says, I also put a piece of wood below the blower so it doesn't freeze to the floor. So that's, that's one rule right there and that's a really good one for all of us to follow. Look at that, another spot where they're cutting corners. Like they're race car drivers or something. Straight shot here. Hey, random note for you guys watching in West Michigan. I am thinking about not these two ponds, but our other pond, enlarging that, making it bigger and making it deeper. Are there any good pond excavators in the area that can help with that? I'd like to know about it. Get down there. Get down. Oh, that's terrible. Oh. Try that again. Oh, hitting something there. Like solid rock. Should have stuck with that first one. Let's 
right there. Good start. Oh yeah, that made the difference. And they just keep going this way. Try it right here. I think this is gonna be the spot. Woo! Yep. Oh yeah. Look at that. Pound this one for days. Boom. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Next rule, make sure nothing critical is frozen when you start blowing. This is a continuation of what I said in number four. If you have a rig like mine, shut off the tractor if no one is in the seat when the PTO device is engaged. Put a mirror where you can see the impeller and augers are freely spinning and the chute rotation is working freely before you have at it. If you have a pull type snowblower and you can see right inside the auger and the chute and everything else, just look right behind you because you'll see it there, okay? So this is probably related to a front mount snowblower or a traditional rear facing snowblower. So we don't have that problem. Okay, next one up. Never put the blower on the ground on a gravel driveway the first time you use it unless you enjoy changing shear bolts. He says this rule is for those of us that don't have a paved driveway. I have a gravel driveway so a good first season snow blowing is a key to no problem for the rest of the winter. Like everyone else, we get a few snowfalls early where you know it's gonna melt. So this next step is the one I take when we get our first real snowfall. First, I run my SUV up and down the driveway until the snow is packed down into the gravel before I snow blow it the first time. That's a good idea. You get that, we talked about this before, you get that, that thin layer kind of packing that gravel down in there and some separation there, like a barrier. Then I run the blower, but keep it off the ground about an inch. This way the ground will freeze better for future efforts. The next time I run the blower on the ground with the skid plates as low as they go, we don't get much thawing once the snow starts in earnest. All right, we got one more tip after that, but we gotta get a few more stakes in the ground. And I know we're talking about snow blowing, but if you look at that pile of snow and there's another pile of melting snow, there's another one over somewhere else too, push that snow back if you have to push it, if you can't blow it, as far as you possibly can because kind of what it's doing right now, it's melting down, it's gonna freeze into an ice ball. You're not gonna move it the rest of the winter. So if you move it just to the edge of your driveway, you're gonna be stuck and out of luck when that snow really starts to pile up. So it seems ridiculous, but take your time pushing it as far back as you can early in the season. Last rule, here we go. When the snow is deep, take smaller cuts of snow. All right, that means if you have a 54 inch wide snow blower, you don't need to take a 54 inch wide pass. That first one, that first pass is gonna have to be that, but after that, you can take 30 inches if you needed to, right? So you, if it's a really deep amount of snow, say you get 18 inches of snow, just take little bites. Just take off what you can handle. It's gonna be a lot more efficient to do it that way and a lot less frustrating. So I found if you're, if you're not frustrated, even if you feel like you're going slower, if you're just not, if you're not frustrated because it's doing a good job and not bogging up and clogging up and, and spilling everything out all over the side, you're gonna feel like you're doing a better job. You're gonna be in a better mood because of it. And that same thing can be said, whether you're blowing snow or pushing snow or plowing, it doesn't really matter. He goes on to say the guy who wrote the Kubota snowblower manual obviously never used a snowblower before. It says in deep snow, take the top layer off and work your way down. To me, this is nonsensical. You're gonna be driving a tractor in deep snow and making a general mess. How about just taking a narrow cut left to right? I've been doing this and it has saved me many a belt on my old snowblower. Well, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. I'd encourage you to check out that thread. We'll put it down in the description of the video and, and include it in the comments section too, but check out forums, man. They're a great alternative. I mean, don't stop watching videos. I mean, come on, you know, but check out the forums too. A great way to get other folks input on there, a good way to interact. You can include pictures and, and videos and all that kind of stuff too. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, it could be snow equipment, snow pusher, snow blower. If you want to grapple, something to grade your gravel, 
all sorts of tools. We're happy to help check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. And hit that subscribe button down below. What are you waiting for? It's completely free. We love to have you tag along. Alrighty, folks. Well, we got to get the rest of these stakes in the ground. So until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Boy, it's so nice in these areas. <clears throat> One, two.